We've got with us uh, Mr. Sandeep Khosla of Khosla Associates Bengaluru as he shares his insights on weaving interior narratives through select work. So if I may please invite, let's have a warm round of applause to welcome architect Sandeep Khosla on the stage. Thank you, uh, Shraddha, and to all at the Festival of Architecture and Interior Design for inviting me to share some of our ideas and work in this wonderful forum. We are a small, a relatively small architecture and interior design firm based in Bangalore with my partner Amrish and myself heading the firm as its principals with a team size of about uh, 20 architects and interior designers. What I want to focus on uh, today is how interior narratives get woven into our projects. Our approach to interiors has always been more about looking at the visceral qualities of an interior space and less about surface application. As architects and interior designers, I sometimes feel that we have a unique vantage point from where to view the development of our projects and to judge the right amount of interior intervention needed in them. The conversations I had with my client were about letting the natural sea breezes in and avoiding air conditioning. To have most of the house open to the elements since security was not much of a concern. That materials should age gracefully and furniture should be hardy. That his days would be spent in the decks by a large pool, reading, meditating, swimming, and practicing yoga and nights would be a retreat into his bedroom. Our interventions were a few, a recognition that the interior design story should play a supportive role and not compete with the already bold architecture. We avoided glass completely and made use of the strong tradi tradition of carpentry in Kerala by crafting a system of sliding and folding louvered shutters so that we could control light, breeze, and view. The materiality, as well as furniture and accessories, were kept simple and minimal so as not to distract from the wonderful natural environment. Seeking a peaceful oasis from the stresses of life, the homeowners wanted a space to breathe, a veranda to watch the rainfall, and a garden to potter about in. They wanted a contemporary design, yet were nostalgic about old Bangalore. And since they were avid readers, they needed a space to accommodate their ever-growing collection of books. The outcome of this highly textured house is a bricolage of old and new. The nostalgia of bringing in hints of colonial architecture that they had grown up with, accommodating the old pot, the ancestral swing, her grandfather's writing desk. The library is given importance as a central space as it combines various activities for the family and provides an anchor to the house. It has carefully demarcated areas for lounging, studying, listening to music, playing the piano, and entertaining in an open plan layout and spills out into an ample veranda, deck, and garden, creating one seamless and interconnected living space. In a rare 16,000 square foot site with many mature trees, we felt the need to create an architecture in harmony with the natural surroundings, inspired by the vernacular, contextual in its materiality, yet peppered with international style markers in its interior treatment. We arrived at an architecture of sloped Mangalore tiled roofs and rough cut Shira stone walls contrasted with flaws of kota and joinery of teak. In the semi-open foyer, a series of vertical ribbed timber louvers provide a gentle filtered divider between the threshold of the house and the garden beyond. In the grand living space, an arresting burnt orange spiral staircase is sculpted out of a shell of mild steel and timber treads. The large swaths of kota stone are broken by a vibrant ikad patterned carpet and a bright color scheme in the furniture. The art and sculpture are by, are by contemporary Indian artists. 
The living area is open to a wooden deck that continues into a wraparound veranda overlooking a lush internal courtyard garden. Shiro recycles an old Bombay dyeing mill building in Mumbai and is a surreal fantasy woven around our travels of Southeast Asia. What is exciting about this project is the high degree of customization we were able to achieve in creating larger-than-life statuary by a group of skilled sculptors in Mumbai, adept at making Ganesh idols. Light fixtures, furniture, and accessories were customized specifically for the 45-foot lofty scale of the space. Blocks of hand-dressed granite took six months to chisel with workers in a stone yard outside Bangalore. We created strong pan-Asian overtones and clever interpretations of Japanese, Chinese, and Balinese elements. The central feature in the Bangalore space is a monumental 25-foot high head of a Balinese consort adorned with rows of golden teardrops hanging from her neck. Customization extends further in this restaurant, which was a collaboration between Khosla's associates and my wife's uh, graphic design firm, TSK Design. We inserted a series of repetitive wooden trapezoidal forms into each of the existing ceiling coffers, forming a warm textural ceiling grid. Juxtaposing the warm space is a stunning red screen in which utilitarian kitchen utensils have been transformed into a whimsical art installation. Giant outlined cutouts of kitchen tools clad in smoked veneer form pivot screens which allow for integration and separation of the chef's table from the main space. Central to the dining area is a seating cluster surrounding a central pebbled water feature. Hovering low above the water is an arresting suspension light fixture of mica and brass, custom designed by us. As architects and interior designers, our sphere of influence is usually limited to our fields of expertise. However, in Loft 38, an entertainment hub we created in one of Bangalore's prime high streets, we tailor-made not only the space. We worked at identifying the gap in the market and the potential end user, helped identify the property, helped define the genres of music to be played and the type of food to be served. The form of the structure draws inspiration from traditional barn architecture and its voluminous interior shell and overriding gable roofs. We chose to contemporize the typology for the possibilities it offered as a theatrical space. Various levels or lofts within a large volume interact seamlessly with one another while freeing sight lines from the stage at one end and the DJ booth on the other. Our primary objective while displaying Goodert's extensive range of products was to reflect the brand's vision of sustainable luxury by making effortless and responsible choices in the spatial flow and choice of materials. One of the challenges of the existing house with several disconnected small rooms was to free the space visually for a meaningful retail experience. On the ground floor, we created three successive linear bays running north-south and connected to one another for a seamless spatial flow. In the entrance courtyard, we intervened by inserting a covered pavilion and a veranda at its two ends, one serving as an organic cafe and the other as an entry to the store, as well as a connector between its two levels. The materials used are natural and recycled reclaimed crate wood on ceilings and shelving, polished cement and white bricks on walls. These were used to give a feeling of lightness and bring the product to the forefront. Also to reiterate the elements that the brand stands for, natural, organic, handcrafted, and sustainable. Fashion designer Manuviraj Khosla required a complete overhaul of his store identity and retail experience with the launch of a prominent new store in Bangalore. The designer had to appeal to his high-end niche clientele, offering them the appropriate shopping experience for his spread line of clothing 
as well as, the de as a destination for his bespoke tailoring. The designer's focus and strength is on menswear, and our first point of reference on the conceptual look and feel of the store was the gentleman's club. The interior of the store is layered with interventions that span different genres. The industrial ceiling is combined with art deco elements, colonial cabinetry, and mid-century furniture in an outcome that breaks norms of a particular style, combines raw and luxe elements with ease, and is wholly eclectic. The brand identity by graphic designers TSK Design brings in the color red to focus with the logo in gold relief on a lacquered red base. Integral to the concept of the art school, this is an arts and media center we designed at the Dune School, is the journey of an artist interpreted as a central axis running east-west along the entire length of the site. The two buildings of the art school, one for art instruction, primarily housing, painting, sculpture, and textile studios, and the other with a lecture hall and display galleries, are connected by an internal bridge. The building is viewed from the outside as a composition of abstract sculptural forms of varying material and texture that emerge from a central spine of yellow slate. The internal volumes are filled with a wonderful quality of north light via a series of skylights so as to minimize the use of artificial lighting during the day. Rather than any other surface application, it is the quality of natural light in the central double height gallery that defines the interior spaces of this institution. And there are times when a certain set of constraints in a project creates an unexpected result. The challenge here was to design and construct a 35,000 square foot kindergarten school within a six month period at an efficient cost of 1,200 rupees a square foot inclusive of the interiors. We adopted a basic 35 feet by 20 feet classroom module, stacked it horizontally and vertically like building blocks, and added layers of intervention. Classrooms flank a single loaded corridor that hold durable, brightly painted corrugated sheets wrapping around the perimeter of a central open to sky courtyard. Terracotta jalis act as a perforated skin, allowing the building to breathe and filtering the harsh western sun. The efficiencies of working with a low budget and strict timelines did not allow us the luxury of separate budgets for architecture and interior design. So the visual impact and comfort of the interior spaces are a direct result of the stripped down materials used architecturally and the play of light through them. The barrage of seductive imagery thrown at us every day by the internet and through product offerings can so easily lead to a cookie cutter approach in every project. The interior designer's challenge today is to transcend the same and create a truly meaningful and thoughtful response to a client brief. In India, we still have the ability to customize solutions at a relatively low cost, and we can intelligently use this as a springboard to create original and rooted work, one that is contextual, relevant, and reflective of the end user's needs. Thank you.